Here we are this afternoon with Joe Boland of the NCI, and the question is, how do you keep four protons busy? Or, if you're getting only 70% genome coverage of a virus, and it's pretty expensive, what do you switch it to? Joe, thanks for talking this afternoon. No problem, Dale. Very interesting talk about uh, human papillomavirus and cervical cancer. And particularly, we're looking at, at Central America. What can you tell us about it? Um, as far as I know from our investigators is that uh, HPV is, or in can cervical cancer, I should say, the incidence rates are extremely high in Guatemala and Nicaragua. Um, and we are trying to develop an assay that is cheap, high quality, and can be um, deployed down to those countries that wouldn't have any ac typical access to that technology. So you were looking at hundreds, was it 800 samples? The initial pilot study was 800 samples. Um, that was comprised mainly of European and non-European descent. Um, future studies will include Native Americans, which are Guatemalans by, by ancestry. Yeah, and you were previously using uh, a different technology at about 70% right. genomic coverage of the virus. Right. Originally, we were using the 454 sequencer and the Axis Array um, platform. Um, it just didn't quite make it there uh, in terms of cost and coverage of the genome was about 70%. Um, obviously, we needed, we needed to do better um, and actually drive the cost further down. Um, that's where AmpliSeq and Proton have played a key role. So you developed a custom AmpliSeq panel? Yes. Custom AmpliSeq panel for HPV-16. Um, it covers 47 overlapping amplicons covering about 99% of the genome um, and we can process 96 samples per P1 chip. So we're routinely getting 99% coverage? Uh, routinely about 98%. So, I mean, it's fantastic for what, what we set out for to do. Yeah. I mean, obviously we were looking 90% and above would be our goal and we've eclipsed that. Yeah. And then as far as the research work goes, you're looking at the viral uh, sort of variation in this HPV-16 HPV strain. Yes, we're looking at the viral variation because within HPV-16 there are a number of sublineages. So that small nucleotide changes will really tell us uh, or could unlock the disease risk per variant lineage. Yeah. And then you did some validation with Sanger sequencing. We did. So out of our pilot, we took about 10% of our samples, roughly 90 samples. Uh, we ran Sanger sequencing and AmpliSeq, and the concordance was greater than 99%. So it's performed better than we could have hoped. Yeah, and there was an interesting graph, right, mm -hmm. in terms of genomic coverage per sample, where the oh, mm -hmm. ion torrent AmpliSeq combination right. was actually a lot higher across those 90 samples. Right. In terms of completion, um, mm -hmm. the ion torrent, I think 89 of the 90 samples had greater than 80% completion, whereas Sanger was a little bit more variable from you know 20% completed all the way up to 100%. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for no joining problem. us this no afternoon. Problem. Really enjoyed the talk. Thanks, Dale. Thank you.